to For Real. It's Wednesday and that means it's time for the News Moto, where you get to watch footage of a ride in Cambodia and I update you on the news of the week. We're going to alternate between Jeremy's rides and guest rides from other channels when we have them. And this week we are delighted to feature a ride by Kelly from Autumn in Asia. While we're on the topic of rides and Autumn in Asia, we, that is the three of us, are going for a bit of a jolly into the Cambodian countryside this weekend. It will be a three-day, two-night expedition on bikes, and we will be visiting the village of Bante Chama. It's northwest of Siem Reap, up near the border with Thailand. There's a cluster of Angkorian-era temples there, so we'll visit them, have a poke around the village, and generally have a fun time with the locals. We'll be making videos, Kelly will be making videos, it's going to be great. At For Real, we donate all of the money we earn from YouTube to charities in Cambodia. Here is the total we have donated so far. Simply watching our videos helps us to earn this money, so your time here on our channel directly helps people in Cambodia. Please subscribe if you haven't already. There's a tiny little button in the bottom right of the screen where you can do it right now. Today is Wednesday the 1st of March and in this episode, we will investigate the outbreak of H5N1 in Cambodia. Is it a concern? Should you be worried? Should we be worried? All will be revealed momentarily. More UXOs have been discovered and Cambodia is allowed out of the financial naughty corner. Pei Lin has a smelly problem and villagers in Ratnakiri fight for their rights in a David and Goliath battle. We will finish up today's news with a great story about one of Siem Reap's long-term expat residents, so be sure to watch right to the end. Firstly, let's look at the outbreak of avian influenza A, that is H5N1, in the kingdom. On the 23rd of February, the Cambodian International Health Regulations reported one confirmed case of human infection with avian influenza A, H5N1 virus, to the World Health Organization. A second case, a family contact of the first case, was reported the following day. The cases are in Praving, a province in the south of Cambodia that borders Vietnam. Back in 2003, Cambodia reported its first outbreak of highly pathogenic avian influenza, that's HPAI H5N1, affecting wild birds. Between 2003 and 2014, human cases due to poultry to human transmission have been sporadically reported in Cambodia. The cases discovered this week are the first two cases in Cambodia since 2014. The first was an 11-year-old girl who, very sadly, has since died. The second case is the girl's father. Twelve close contacts of the girl and her father were quarantined, and eight of those people were found to be asymptomatic, while four showed symptoms. The girl's father, who was asymptomatic, was isolated in hospital and has since recovered. Since the first outbreak in 2003, a total of 58 cases of human infection with avian influenza A, H5N1 virus, have been reported in Cambodia, so only 58 in 20 years. Of those 58 though, 38, that's 66%, have died. A joint health investigation is underway in the province to identify the source and mode of transmission. Additionally, a high-level government response is underway to contain any further spread of the virus. These cases of H5N1 have been widely reported around the world, but there aren't many additional facts to be gleaned by reading those reports. Mostly, they just mention the cases, then quote the WHO's response. So what is the WHO's take on the situation, and what is their assessment of the risk associated with it? Let's have a look. Almost all influenza A H5N1 infection cases in people have been associated with close contact with infected live or dead birds or contaminated environments. Based on evidence so far, the virus does not infect humans easily, and infection from person to person is highly unlikely. That's key. An outbreak investigation is ongoing, including identifying the source of exposure of the two reported cases to the virus. Since the virus continues to be detected in poultry populations, further human cases can be expected. Around the world from 2003 to date, there has been a total of 873 human cases of infection with influenza A, resulting in 458 deaths. That's 52% of those cases resulting in death. And the cases come from 21 countries. It's definitely the high percentage of deaths in those infected that has people concerned, but the numbers globally over a 20-year period are minuscule, so 873 human cases in 20 years. It's not very many. 
So, it is more likely that you would die from a shark attack after your plane crashed from being struck by lightning than getting or dying from this virus. Virological evidence suggests that the current virus has not acquired the ability of sustained transmission among humans, therefore the likelihood of human-to-human -human spread is low. Based on available information so far, the WHO assesses the risk to the general population posed by this virus to be low. So just repeating, this is nothing like COVID, it's not the next COVID. This virus is not highly contagious unless you are a bird. Anyone planning to visit Cambodia, pack your bags, come and enjoy this beautiful country and do not fear that this virus is going to spoil things. Unfortunately though, the same cannot be said for unexploded ordinances. They are a much bigger killer in Cambodia. UXOs were found by a farmer who was harvesting bamboo shoots in a village near Palin City. The farmer was digging at the bamboo thicket to harvest bamboo shoots when he discovered the UXOs. He reported the discovery to the authorities. The Cambodian Mine Action Centre retrieved and disabled the UXOs. A big shout out to these people who risk their lives every day to keep the community safe. International financial crime watchdog, the Financial Action Task Force, or the FATF, has removed Cambodia from its grey list of countries involved in money laundering. The grey list contains countries under special scrutiny to implement standards to prevent money laundering and terrorism financing. Cambodia has been on that list since 2019. With its new status, Cambodia is now no longer subject to increased monitoring by the FATF. The removal of Cambodia from this grey list is the result of work done by the Cambodian government to improve law enforcement on money laundering and other financial crimes in the kingdom. Visitors to Kampot will be able to enjoy activities without being assailed by tobacco smoke after the mayor of Kampot confirmed that the city has been designated as a no-smoking tourist destination. The city administration announced a campaign under the theme Together We Reduce and Eliminate the Use of All Kinds of Tobacco for a City Without Smoking. That's a big campaign title. The mayor clarified that it will not be forbidden to smoke, but smokers must smoke in a place that does not affect others. Something else is upsetting people up in Ratnakiri province though. Residents of a village are up in arms over a road closure. They were told that a private company had closed the road to perform maintenance. Residents did not accept this reason because the road provides a necessary lifeline between their homes and livelihoods. The blocked road leads from their village to markets and schools and is one of only two ways into the remote area. A local resident added that the people had been living in the area for some time. They were using the road long before the company began to operate. They are questioning why the company can close the road for private reasons and forbid necessary local traffic. There are 700 families who live along the road near the company premises. They protested and have asked for the district authorities to mediate. In a win for the villagers, the company has now decided to reopen the road temporarily, except for big trucks. The company will allow small cars to pass and hopefully motorbikes as well. It's moto madness time. According to sources at the scene in Phnom Penh, a group of five to six male foreign nationals were seen driving a grey jeep along the Russian Federation road in a west to east direction. At a traffic light, they collided with a white MG luxury car that was being driven by a woman. Both cars were seriously damaged, but fortunately there were no injuries. Emotions were running high after the crash, though. The two sides could not reach an agreement, so authorities impounded the two cars, waiting for further settlement later. A pro trip for people considering driving in Phnom Penh. While driving, always be prepared for the unexpected, like in this case. A drunk driver lost his control of his Highlander vehicle and plunged into a pond. The man was eventually able to extricate himself from the sinking vehicle and he proceeded to flee the scene, leaving authorities to deal with his sunken car. Now, on to the best story of the week. Siem Reap has its very own Catwoman. This is an amazing story. Meet Josette Veneur. Josette worked in the French movie industry in Paris for 14 years, supervising the French subtitling of American films being distributed in France. She developed a fascination for Japan, learned the language and then moved there to live in 1988. She quickly scored a job with a Japanese tour operator and have ended up staying there for 21 years. In 2010, she visited Cambodia on a holiday and loved it so much that she eventually settled in Siem Reap. She had an established history in animal welfare at that stage and she began to tend to Siem Reap's most desperate cats. Over time, she established Pagoda Cats, 
an organisation that allows Josette to fundraise and advocate for the voiceless kitties in need living in one of Siem Reap's pagodas. This is one of the great things about expat life in Siem Reap. There are so many people doing different and interesting things, and there's always something going on. The best part is that you can join the fun. If you're in Siem Reap, you can help Josette celebrate 10 years of pagoda cats. Imagine the thousands of kitties she must have helped in that time. Anyway, there is going to be a big celebration on Saturday the 18th of March at Amici Restaurant from 6pm. There will be a raffle with awesome prizes like hotel stays, restaurant meals and tickets to local experiences. It's a great way to get out and meet other expats. If you can't make it on the 18th though, why not head to Wonders Hostel on any Tuesday night? You'll be entertained by our good mate and fantastic DJ Ange, aka DJ Pinkbits, and you can buy cocktails to support Josette's Pagoda Cats. It's a win-win for sure. Once again, that brings us to the end of this week's news. You're now up to date with all of the most important events in the kingdom. Thank you to Kelly from Autumn in Asia for providing today's ride. Keep an eye out for his next video. It's going to be a village tour, so if you like that kind of thing, head over to his channel and subscribe. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram as we post there daily, and you'll get to see a little bit of Bante Chamar before the videos go out. Thanks so much for watching, take care, have a great week, and we'll see you very soon.